what if the people guiding your flight weren't even at the airport? Today, air traffic controllers can be sitting hundreds of kilometers away, watching every movement on massive panoramic screens. And in some ways, they see more than they could from a traditional tower. This tech is rolling out right now, and it's already reshaping aviation. Air traffic control hasn't changed much since World War II. Think tall towers, radar screens, and good old binoculars. But with more flights, the old system is starting to hit its limits. We are now entering an era of digital air traffic control towers, where controllers no longer need to be physically on site. Instead, they manage airport traffic using advanced cameras, sensors, and data streams. Let's take London City Airport as an example of how remote digital towers actually work in practice. Instead of controllers sitting in the airport's old tower, operations are now run from the control centre in Swanwick, about 115 kilometres away, using a live feed from ultra HD cameras and sensors mounted on the airfield and presented on high resolution displays, providing full 360 degree coverage. The system isn't just a video stream, it enhances visibility and infrared for low light conditions and even overlays aircraft call signs on screen. The system automatically adjusts for glare from direct sunlight or reflections off snow, so controllers can track aircraft clearly without being dazzled. They can also zoom in to pick out fine details with extra data like weather conditions and wind strength displayed directly onto the live view. On top of that, External surveillance data provides precise tracking in all phases of flight, boosting safety and maintaining all-weather capability. Another example is the two remote tower centres in Sweden, each providing air traffic control to four airports, with some being 1,200 kilometres apart. These centres are able to support up to 24 airports each, making it possible to cover the entire country from just one or two locations. The cameras can be placed at different locations to cover large areas at larger airports. Digital towers also allow for additional technology, such as AI-powered support tools, drone detection and more. But how is the system protected from disruption by storms, power outages or other threats that could potentially disrupt a fully digital system? The system is able to function in any weather condition around the clock, thanks to the advanced protection built into the infrastructure and cameras. Dual power sources with backup generators ensure a constant power supply. Multiple encrypted fiber links carry the video and data feeds, and fallback procedures like traditional radar and radio are available in case of disruption. When Hurricane Ophelia hit Ireland in October 2017, no image distortions were registered on the system in use there and operations carried on without interference, thanks to the very stable mast construction. Digital towers are a useful tool for disaster relief operations and militaries as well. A digital tower can be deployed at a forward air base or control multiple small fields without needing a full tower staff. In an age where resilience is everything, remote towers could be just as important on the battlefield or disaster zone as they are in commercial aviation. But does this mean traditional towers will disappear? Not at all. They complement each other. Traditional towers remain essential at complex airports, where on-site presence and immediate communication are crucial. But a digital tower system will coexist at large airports to provide contingency when needed. Remote towers, meanwhile, extend coverage to regional and rural airports where controllers are difficult to recruit. Not to mention that traditional ATCs are expensive and complex to move at an active airport. Whilst remote towers can easily be expanded and upgraded. It also allows airports to be opened only when there is traffic or an urgent need. For example, for emergency landings or medical flights when an airport is normally closed. Together they form a hybrid model, the trusted human presence of traditional towers 
together with the technological edge of digital towers. Saab became a pioneer by building the very first digital air traffic control in 2015. And it's now being implemented at the world's largest airports. As the aviation industry continues to evolve, remote towers represent a rare shift in air traffic control. And their influence on the skies ahead is undeniable. What do you want to learn about defense technology or tech in general? Comment below what we should talk about in the coming episodes and check out Saab.com.